If you're euronymphing or you want a heavier midge larva, this is the pattern that looks like a midge larva and it's gonna get down fast. Okay, when I got into uranymphing a number of years ago, one of the things that my OCD hatch matching brain couldn't wrap itself around was there weren't a lot of like really imitative midge patterns that I'd been used to using on tailwaters. Anyway, so this is kind of a mixture of both. So it's going to be a very imitative cat or midge larva, but it also, and it's small. So this is the new size 22 of the fooling mill jig force hook lineup, size 22. It probably doesn't measure out to what you'd say a standard 22 is, but it's a solid, small, midgy hook. So, and this is just about as easy as you can get. Uh, so we'll go ahead and lock the bead onto the hook. And you can do that with this one, or if it helps, you can also snug that with your fingers. But um, I wanna keep the wraps to a minimum, because again, I want that footprint to be fairly thin, like a midge larva would be. And the coloration is going to vary here. You could use black if you wanted, but uh, this sort of tan beige coloration is my favorite. And so I'll just work my way back. I want this to be tapered evenly, so touching turns down and back when we go back. And like so, <clears throat> we'll tie in the body. If you have not used the hairline midge stretch rib, you need to get every color. This stuff is like V-rib or uh, any of those D-ribs, but this is circular in cross-section, but it's small and it's stretchy. So you could use this for midge patterns, betas patterns, PMDs, all sorts of things. It's super versatile. <coughs> so the way I do this to avoid a uh, thread buildup or a material buildup is I'm gonna tie this with a little excess and you could do a pinch wrap if you need right on the top of the hook the hook shank. And then with one wrap, I should be able to kind of finagle this into place. Okay, so it's locked in there, but only two wraps, so I can't really crank on it yet. But what I'm gonna do is I'll give it that second lock wrap, and then I'm going to go in front of this and work my way back up. Again, keeping this taper really thin. As I get up to the top, and midge larvae are not too terribly tapered, not like a uh, mayfly nymph. So you don't want to build this up too much. And a very slight taper, so a couple times down and back. Now this is going to be locked in pretty good. So what I like to do is I like to grab some hackle pliers. And <clears throat> this is where you're going to need sharp scissors. So that's why I really like these Renameds because they have probably what's the sharpest, finest point. Look at that. Can't even see it. And so I'm going to grab the end of this, very lightly pull up so that it's got tension, and then as close as you can as you pull. And that's locked in with very minimal waste and, uh, and bumping there. So again, just kind of being careful. You don't need to stretch this too terribly much, but I'll go ahead and rotate as we go up. Okay, I'm only gonna get four, three or four wraps of that, but that's fine. And again, just keeping this as slim as possible. Two wraps, two lock wraps, and then I'll trim this. Again, super fine point scissors are gonna be key for this sort of thing. If I can see. Just trim those as flush as I can get them. And now if you do notice that your wraps are kind of out of whack, this one isn't too bad, but you can come in here with a bodkin and kind of move these ribs around. Because if you don't, those fish are going to look at that and they're going to go, oh, that's just not going to cut it, boy. Anyway, mine are all right for me at least. I'm not going to mess with it, but you can go after the fact. So I'll just build up a tiny bit more thread here.
wood finish. We'll just cut that as flush as we can. When you are using these small flies with fine, fine scissors, I always find when you go to cut, it's best to rest the scissors on your other hand so you can get a accuracy. So now all we need to do is add the secret sauce, which is Loon Fluorescing UV Clear Fly Finish, it's UV resin. Um, <clears throat> here's the before. Okay, nothing to, nothing to see here, just UV reflection. Now I'm gonna add the secret sauce. This will blow your mind. And apparently the fish love it too. Don't quote me on that. Okay, I'm just gonna do a really thin layer and then I like to rotate it so it's kind of gone around and then I'll just tap it with the finger and to get off the excess and that pushes the other into the middle and now you can kind of see a little bit more reflectance. And I'm gonna hit it with one more shot here on the back and this is just more of a UV hotspot sort of gig. And you, you can see how that lights up a little bit better, especially on that angle. And if you see some spots as you're shining the light on this, you need to throw in a little extra resin, you can do that. But that's killer. It will drop like a veritable rock. And it's uh, easy to tie. You can whip these out, tie them in red, tie them in tan. Um, and you, I just fish it on a Euro rig with another anchor fly that's a little heavier. Also, guess what? This makes an excellent, and I mean excellent dropper, if you're fishing dry dropper or something like that. So give it a whirl. We've got the fly materials listed down below in the link in the description, and you can check us out at flyfishfood.com.